Okay, so we got a request to um, take a look at a, another one of our logic proofs here. So I actually pulled up two examples that we're gonna work through today. So here's our first one. And just a reminder with these logic proofs, okay, where you wanna start with them um, when you're setting up your statements and reasons is if you have a single letter, always start with your single letter first. Okay, it's gonna make your life a lot easier. So I see for this problem, we have P as a single letter. So my first thing I'm gonna write down is just that P is true. The reason is that's a given, or some of you might also write that as premise, okay? Um, but that's gonna be our given here. And then I'm gonna look for something else that has a P in it that they gave me. Well, I'm looking at the first line and I can see they gave us that P implies A. Okay, that's right up here. So that was another given statement. So what can we conclude from this? Well, if P is true, then I know that P is true as well. And the only way a conditional statement can be true is if both parts of it are true, the hypothesis and the conclusion, or if um, the hypothesis or the initial is false, then the whole statement be true. Since P is true here though, that means my A value must be true as well. So I'm gonna put down A is true. And what we call this, when we're just pulling this off, P is true, so P, P, and then A, and we get A, um, we call this modus ponens. We're just pulling off that last part there. And that was from lines one and two. All right, now that we have A, let's go ahead and look for something else that has A. Well, I see right here, we have A implies R. Okay, that was given to us. And so we're gonna do the same thing. Actually, this is the exact same setup. Well, if A is true, and then this conditional statement has A is true, then we know that R is true. Okay, again, that's also the same thing. That's also modus ponens, but this time that's gonna be from lines three and four there. Okay, now that we have R, let's look for something else that has an R in it. Okay, well, I see this second line here, six, says that G implies not R. All right, that was given to us. Well, now let's think about this. Okay, so R is true, which means not R is false. Now we talked about this before, a conditional statement, the only way it's true is if they're both true, which clearly they're not right here, or is if our hypothesis is false, which means that G actually has to be false. Now remember, when you're writing your statements, you only wanna write things that are true. So now if you know that G is false, that's going to tell us that not G is going to be true here. Okay, so we had R, not R, G, not G. Those are opposites of each other. This is what we call modus tollens. And we got that from lines five and six there. All right, now that we have, um, I'm gonna look for something else with a G, so I see this line here, uh, eight G or H, this disjunctive statement. Okay, that was given to us. And now we're gonna use this. Well, if not G is true, and I know G is false, the only way a disjunctive statement is true is if one of those, at least one of those is true. So either G is true or H is true, or they're both true. Now, since I know though that G is false, and I know that this statement is true, then I know that H must be true. So I can conclude that H is true. And we got that from that disjunctive statement combined with our line seven there. So we call this a disjunctive um, syllogism. I have no idea if I'm saying that right. Um, or some of you might call that disjunctive inference. Um, but that came from these past two lines here, line seven and line eight. Okay. All right, and now we've uh, done it. We've proved each here. Okay, so let's uh, try one more of these here. Okay, I have a whole nother set. Uh, and for this one, we're given these statements and we're trying to prove L. So let's set this up with a statement and reason column. All right. Okay, so again, I like to start with single letters at the beginning of this. So for this, I see a not H right off the bat. 
So I'm going to say not H. That was given to us. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to look for something else that has an H in it. Okay. So I see this H or G. So H or G. And that was also given to us. So usually you're going to start with two um, given statements. Very rare that you only use one, although it does happen. Uh, so here it says not H is true. Well, again, if not H is true, then H is false. The only way this disjunctive statement is going to be true is if one or the other or both of them are true, which means that G must be true. So here we can conclude G. That's going to be our we got this from the disjunctive statement. So this is our disjunctive syllogism. Okay, from lines one and two here. And now we're gonna look for something else that has a G in it. So I look at that first line, I see G implies M here. So again, G is true. So this G is true. And again, the only way a conditional is true is if they're both true or the first part is false. Since the first part is true, I know that M must be true. Okay, so this was our given statement here, and now I can conclude that M is true. And the reason why we just did that, when you're just pulling off that last part, okay, that's called that modus uh, ponens. I think I've also seen this called detachment before. So if you're using detachment, you might see it like that. Um, this is from lines three and four. Okay, because you're literally just detaching the M. Uh, and then six here, let's look for something else that has an M in it. Okay, so I see line two there. We have M implies not P. Okay, that was given to us. And so what can I conclude from this? Well, we know M is true. We know this M is true then, which means, again, for this uh, conditional statement to be true, then not P is going to have to be true. Okay, we need a true followed by a true. So not P is true. Again, we had MM, we just detached that uh, not P there. So that's going to be our modus ponens again. And we got that from lines five and six. We use those two statements to make that conclusion. All right, so now uh, here we are going to look at the last thing we have here. So we have that not L implies P. That was given. And so if I look at this here, um, we know that not P is true. So then P here has to be false. Now, again, if we're looking at the conditional statement, it has to either be true, true, or just the first part, that hypothesis must be false. Since the second part is not true, our conclusion is not true, it's false. That means that this first part must be false. Oh, well, again, if not L is false, remember, you're only writing down things that are true. If not L is false, then that means that L must be true. Okay, and here we used not P and P, not L to conclude L. Those are opposites of each other. That's going to be the modus tollens here. And we got that from lines seven and eight. So hopefully this gives you a little bit of insight on how to do these logic proofs. If you guys have specific examples that you want to look at, um, you can go ahead and go on beyondthetest.com and click on our forum and post your question there. I'd be happy to make more videos showing some of these, and I would love to use the examples that you guys have. Um, so if you do have any other questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to get back to you guys.